In this episode, we're going to talk about something called the for each loop, which is the last loop we're going to talk about of all the loops we've been talking about for the last three episodes. So when we talk about a for each loop, it's a little bit different than the rest of the loops we talked about because a for each loop deals with something we call an array. Now, an array we haven't really discussed yet, but just to give you guys a very brief explanation of arrays, as you guys can see, I do actually have one written out here. And basically, an array is when we have a bunch of data which has been combined into one something, like a variable like we have here. So right now, I do actually have an, a, a variable, which I called array, which is equal to an actual array, which has different data inside of it. So usually, we would just have array equal to one string or something, or like a number. In this case, we do actually have multiple numbers inside one uh, variable. So, so now that we have the array in here, we can actually start talking about the for each loop. Now, I'm just going to give you guys an example here underneath where I'm going to create a for each loop by writing for each space parentheses curly brackets. Now, a for each loop basically says inside the parentheses that we need to refer to an array, which we're going to loop through as we actually, you know, loop through this. Uh, thing in here, this uh, function called it for each. And what we're basically going to do is every time we mention another variable which we create inside our loop, it's going to spit out a piece of data from this array which we created up here that we're going to refer to. So inside the parentheses, I'm going to go ahead and write the name of my array or the array we're going to use in this example called array. I'm going to say as. And then I'm going to give it a name of another variable, which we're going to use inside the loop. And we haven't created this one yet, but we're going to do it once we get inside the loop itself. So I'm going to go ahead and create a variable called, we can just call it loop data. And inside the loop itself, we can now start writing something. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to go ahead and since we have names up here, inside the loop, I'm going to say echo string. And inside here, I'm going to say my name is space. Afterwards, I'm going to go ahead and say dot variable. And then I'm going to refer to the variable we created up here called loop data. Because each time we use loop data, it's going to go through this array and loop out the information. So if I do actually go ahead and write this like so, and go down to the next line. Actually, we don't need to go down to the next line. We can just go ahead and add a break after here because we do want to have a break in between what we're writing here. So we have everything listed underneath each other. So if I do actually save this, refresh the browser, you guys will notice we get my name is Daniel. My name is Jane. My name is Jacob. And the really cool thing about for each loops is that we don't have to, you know, increase some kind of number each time in order not to create the infinite loops that you might be able to create in the other examples. So in here, it's automatically going to stop looping as soon as the array doesn't have any more, you know, variables or like data inside of it. So we can actually go ahead and, you know, just include another couple ones in here. Just going to paste them some more. We can say John and Marianne. Marianne. We can say Marianne. And as you guys can see, it just continues looping out the rest of the names. So this is how a for each loop actually works. And there's not really a lot more to it. Now we talked about a lot of different kinds of loops now. And you guys might not be able to see the purpose of each one of them like in a real life example. But at some point, we will be using these loops individually for some kind of experiment or, you know, a little workshop we're going to do at some point. So for now, we talked about the loops. And we can actually start getting started on talking about some a couple of other things that we need to know before we talk about databases. But soon we can actually start getting into databases because in order to create something like a, you know, like a login system or a sign up system on a website, we do actually need to know just a little bit about databases. So soon we can actually start creating some really cool stuff inside a website. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I'll see you guys next time.